Um, today we are very happy to have Zhang Jiehu. Uh, he is a PhD student at Shulab National University of Singapore, advised by Prof. Mike Shoujun and Prof. Yuan Yi Shu. Uh, he re uh, previously worked with Dr. Ge Yi Shao and Wang Xingtao at Tencent ARC Lab, and he received his bachelor's degree in computer science from Shenyue Army's College of Beihang University. His research interests include computer vision and deep learning, with a recent focus on video generation models. Uh, welcome, Zhang Jie. Yeah, uh, thanks, Zhiqi, for the introduction and also for uh, inviting me to this talk. So today I'm going to uh, introduce our recent research progress on the uh, uh, video creation with the diffusion models. So uh, yeah, my name is Jay and I'm a PhD student at Sholai National University of Singapore. So currently I'm working on the uh, diffusion model for video generation and also the editing, etc. So let's get started. So yeah, uh, I I believe you have uh, seen this video last year of uh, Will Smith uh, eating spaghetti generated by uh, a model called Modoscope by the Alibaba team. And uh, now this year, the uh, text to video generation has already uh, progressed really fast. So creating this video, AI video now. But actually this is not a generated video. It's the video shooted by the uh, real Will Smith itself. So, but uh, recently that the OpenAI team has uh, released a really impressive model called the Sora. Actually, they have achieved very, very amazing performance of this uh, video generation uh, condition on the text. So I guess uh, everyone already knows Sora, and, uh, but uh, actually in last years, we didn't have so uh, this Sora, Sora, sorry, this Sora model, and uh, actually the text to video generation is still in a, an early stage. So going back to the uh, last year, so time how time flies. So one year for such amazing progress. So dating back to then, uh, we uh, actually have made some progress in the video generation field uh, with, uh, for example, the tunnel video with the stable diffusion model for the video generation. And also we have uh, provided the uh, Showa model is a text to video foundation model uh, capable of doing the text to video generation and uh, uh, also other downstream tasks. And uh, also we uh, investigate the motion control video diffusion models with the uh, motion director. And uh, uh, finally, we have proposed a model called Dynamic Video E. So this is a, a model for long form video editing using the dynamic nerve. So today I'm gonna go through this uh, our research work on the video generation field and uh, uh, hopefully hopefully have uh, uh, some insights for for all the audience. So uh, and uh, this work uh, was done in uh, show lab with the, all these amazing researchers, uh, PhD students. Uh, uh, David is the uh, is a colleague of the Showan project and uh, uh, Ray uh, lead the motion director project and Jawe and uh, uh, is leading the uh, Dime Video E project. Uh, so uh, before we go into the video diffusion part, I would like to have a very a uh, quick and short introduction of what is uh, uh, what diffusion model is. 
So the diffusion model defines a forward process and a reverse process. So the forward process is gradually, uh, gradually adding noise to a uh, image it, and uh, the reverse process is to denoise the added noise. So, uh, so in the forward process, uh, given a data point x zero from the real data distributions, so let us define the forward diffusion process in which we add a small amount of Gaussian noise to the uh, sample in t steps. So this produces a, a sequence of noisy samples x1 to xt, and uh, also the step size is controlled by the variance beta. And uh, so a nice property of the, the above forward process is that we can sample the xt at any arbitrary time step, so in a cross form using the reparameterization trick. And uh, for the reverse process, we all we need to do is to train a neural network to predict the noise and uh, remove it gradually. And uh, also, this this latent diffusion model is uh, is a uh, a family of diffusion model that operates a diffusion process in the. Uh, latent space in, instead of pixel space. So this latent diffusion model encodes the uh, original pixel space to a compact latent space. So this actually can uh, save a lot of uh, computational cost because it's model in a latent space rather than the uh, pixel space. And uh, it allows uh, different kinds of conditioning using the cross attention mechanism. So uh, actually, the the latent diffusion model is uh, is the foundation of a famous model called stable diffusion that can do the text to image generations. So uh, back to then we. Uh, when the stable diffusion model, uh, the first version of stable diffusion release, we can actually generate very interesting images of, for example, like the Spider-Man uh, on the beach at uh, different kinds of the styles. But uh, at that time, we actually didn't have any uh, text to video diffusion models that uh, are publicly uh, publicity available at that time. So how to use the stable diffusion the, in the image domain to do the video creations? So the motivation is quite simple. So the stable diffusion can already generate really good appearance uh, from uh, the, a very large pre uh, a very large corpus of uh, image data sets. So uh, what we need to do is to learn a dynamic. Uh, so how to learn this dynamic? We can learn it from uh, reference videos. So here uh, motivates us to design such a framework that with a reference video as input and a pre-trained uh, image diffusion model. And uh, we fine tune this uh, video, the specific reference video on this uh, text to image model and have a, a, a text to video models. So we can uh, do uh, any kind of changes on the text prompt uh, via inference. For example, is we change uh, the man to a Spider-Man and also the uh, the background and the style. So uh, before we uh, go into the specific methods, I would like to show some observation we made in uh, text to image diffusion models. So the first observation is that the steer image can accurately represent 
the verb tense. For example, if we uh, need to generate a man running on the beach, the uh, the stable diffusion can already understand the uh, the specific verb term of running and generate it. And uh, that's uh, achieved by the spatial self attention to maintain the uh, spatial global consistency. But if we extend this uh, spatial self attention to spatial temporal, this can uh, actually create consistency content uh, around the temporal space. So here we have a man uh, running on the beach and is uh, consistency in terms of the content. But uh, you can still see that the, uh, the man moved forward and back. So there is no continuous motion with these uh, individual friends. So uh, to obtain this, to learn this kind of motion, we need a reference video and also a network that can do the temporal modeling. So we inflate the original stable diffusion to a, a temporal domain. So this, uh, we made the following uh, modification to the uh, UNEX structure. So we uh, first inflate the 2D convolution to a pseudo 3D convolution. And uh, we have the temporal attention layers added to after the uh, add, added to the attention module. And uh, also we like what we observed from previous time that we extend the spatial self attention to spatial temporal for better temporal content consistency. So however, if we use a full attention along spatial temporal domain or a causal one, that would actually cause a lot of computation cost. And uh, so we design a much more efficient one called sparse causal. And it actually only attends to the first friend and uh, previous friend to obtain necessary information uh, from these previous two friends. And uh, also we uh, fine tuned this uh, video and also our inflated network. So, uh, a naive solution is to fully fine tune the neural network, but this will cause uh, a lot of problems. One is is uh, the full fine tuning is kind of in uh, in in efficient, especially when the number of friends increase. And uh, we found that the full fine tuning is prone to overfitting problems. So this will hurt the editing. Uh, ability with the uh, text condition. And uh, we design a better uh, fine tuning strategy that only update the specific uh, projection metrics in the attention map. So this is uh, way much faster than uh, full fine tuning and parameter efficient. And also it can retain the original property of the text to image diffusion models. And during sampling, we use the uh, DDIM inversion to get a uh, uh, latent noise and uh, uh, perform the denoising on this uh, inverted latent noise. So uh, this is uh, beneficial to preserve the structure of the uh, the original video, and uh, it also improves the temporal consistency. We have a ablation study later to show this. And uh, here comes to the application of uh, our design model. So with the uh, general, general pre-trained uh, text to image diffusion model like stable diffusion, uh, we can achieve the editing of uh, any video. And uh, we can also integrate this with the personalized diffusion models. So it can create some customized motion, a uh, customized appearance. And uh, we can also integrate it, it with the uh, post control module like the control net or T2I adapter to 
uh, perform further control on the uh, object motion. And here are some uh, results generated using the stable diffusion model and our fine tuning strategy. So uh, our method can uh, perform the editing of the video, for example, like removing a object or changing the background or even the styles. Yeah, more re uh, results. And here we show some uh, results uh, compare, uh, combined with the uh, personalized text to image diffusion model like the Dream Boost, uh, which takes three to five images as input and return a T2, uh, personalized T2I models. So uh, we can, with this Dream Boost model, we can have the personalized, uh, personalized for the uh, style like the Disney style or or can be personalized on the, such as the Mr. Potato has. And here is a result of the uh, post control. So uh, we can change the pose of this Iron Man to, uh, from dribbling a basketball to like dancing on the beach and also the running. Uh, here we compare our model with some best lines, uh, for like the code video. Code video is uh text to video diffuse uh text to video model that uh performs sort of performance at that time, and uh, also other. Uh, add to the space uh, editing method like text to live and uh, also image level uh, editing methods. So our method performs the better consistency and it allows a uh, large change of the uh, object. For example, here the air teller space method cannot change the structure of this card, but we can change it uh, from a jeep to a, a porch. And yeah, more example compare with the baseline method. And we have ablation study to uh, verify the effective, e effectiveness of our design uh, module, like the spatial temporal attention and also the DDIM inversion and uh, the fine tuning. more results. And we have shown some numerical comparison with uh, this, this method uh, with uh, the automatic metrics like clip score and uh, also we perform user studies to show uh, the uh, effectiveness of our method. Uh, I would like to address the impact of this project. Actually, this is our early uh, attempt to design a diffusion model with an uh, with with an image diffusion model that is open source and publicly available. So, this uh, work actually re uh, received a lot of attention from the open source community. Uh, so we have uh, around four K starts at GitHub and uh, uh, at that time there is no uh, work that use the stable diffusion for this kind of video creation. So we also uh, have, uh, our, our also was covered by the two million papers and uh, uh, it has also inspired a lot of work uh, in the video generation and uh, editing field. Uh, such as the animative or fade zero. So uh, I am I'm very happy that the open source community can join the effort to uh, make this uh, make this world more impactful to uh, all the researcher or uh, uh, or the 
person in the open source community. And uh, next, uh, I will introduce uh, uh, another project called Show One. This is a uh, text to video foundation models. So uh, in this model, bring, uh, so. Yeah. Sorry, I think it's a little bit small. Uh, so uh anyway, if you cannot see uh this video playing uh on your screen, you can uh go to our uh, website to see some video examples. Sorry about that. And uh, uh, this model achieved better text and the video alignment, and it can uh, allow large motions, and it's also memory efficient. Oh, I think now it works. So I'm free. The frame rate is a little bit low due to the connection. Yeah. Anyway, uh, here are some comparison with this uh existing uh text to video uh foundation model at that time. So there are two challenges in the uh text to video foundation model. One is that uh. So it's hard to achieve good text uh, alignment. So uh, for example, here we have th this kind of blue tiger, but uh, some of the model cannot actually understand this and uh, picture this. So where our model can actually perform better in terms of the text alignment. And uh, we do have uh, larger motions actually, so, uh, for example, in uh, the the second row, we show that this taught practicing correct, and uh, the motion is much larger than uh, other competitive models like Gen two or zero score. So the motivation is that uh, we found the modeling the uh, diffusion process in the pixel space achieve much more better uh, text video alignment compared to that in the latent space. So uh, as I have introduced earlier about the latent diffusion models, the latent diffusion model is uh, more efficient, but it actually uh, performs worse in terms of the text alignment and also the motion. Uh, however, also, the pixel label, pixel-based uh, video diffusion model also has a problem that it requires much larger memory than the latent-based diffusion model. So uh, here we uh, design a hybrid framework that performs video generation in both pixel and also latent domain. So uh, we use pixel-based diffusion model for the low resolution generation and uh, further up sample the results from low resolution to high resolution using a latent diffusion model, which is much more efficient when operating on a, a larger re resolution. And uh, our model can better understand the text and uh, it can also generate the text in the uh, videos. So let's show better uh, text alignment. And also thanks to the T, uh, Ziqi and also the team that uh, we have this vBench to evaluate the performance of different kinds of uh, video diffusion models. So uh, I think uh, Showan is still very competitive among these 
uh, video diffusion models. And uh, furthermore, I will introduce the motion director. So uh, since we already have the, for example, a text to video generation model that can do the generation of uh, condition on the text prompt, but uh, let's consider a scenario that uh, we want to generate a monkey playing golf uh, so as I mentioned earlier that the text to video diffusion model are actually not very well in uh, performing tech, uh, good uh, text alignment. So here we have tried to uh, generate some results with a zero score of TK and Gen2. And uh, I guess this is not the... Uh, the one you actually picture in mind that uh, what the monkey playing golf looks like. So, uh, so how to let the monkey play golf? Uh, let's give uh, the foundation model some hints. Uh, for example, we uh, have a few videos of uh, a motion like the playing golf uh, uh, recorded by human. And uh, what we need to do is to tune a foundation model so it can uh, generate the motion of playing golf on a monkey. So that's the key idea of this motion director. And actually the motion director can customize the foundation model to generate any desired motions. So for example, we have a few videos of a person lifting weights and uh, here we can let, uh, for example, the beer and uh, also the dog to perform this motion. And uh, we can also do this in a single video. Uh, for example, we want to uh, reproduce a specific kind of camera motions uh, like the surrounding shot here. So we can uh, use motion director to uh, learn this kind of motion and uh, do the text to video generation with this specific motion. And also, this, also uh, the object motion can. So uh, I will briefly introduce the pipeline we use uh, for motion director. So the challenge here is to decouple the motion and uh, also the appearance. So uh, we here we design a two-way uh, module that uh, one is for modeling the spatial information and another is for the temporal information. So uh, the spatial information is uh, kind of like the uh, the dream booth we already been widely used. And uh, for the temporal paths, we uh, we apply LoRa method to uh, this kind of temporal attentions and uh, do the uh, do it on the temporal domain. Uh, so but this will also have a problem that it cannot completely decouple the spatial temporal. So we further designed a strategy to debias the uh debias the appearance in the uh temporal branch. I will introduce this uh for so the actually the key motivation is that uh we can have uh an anchor friend that can uh, provide the information of the appearance. And uh, for other uh, friends, we can actually uh, like have a shift shift uh, on the on the anchor friend. And uh, this will uh, reduce the the impact or the effect of the appearance in the temporal branch. So here are some results of the 
decouple in the appearance and the motion. For example, uh, we can, I think it's no play. Oh, okay, uh, it works. So uh, for example, we can use the motion of video one and uh, the appearance of uh, video two to create uh, the, the, the video here. At uh in the third road, and uh, uh vice versa, we can use the uh appearance of video one and the motion from the video two. So this shows the decoupled of the appearance and motion. And also, we have an interesting observation that uh actually the. We we take the latent code at uh time step zero, uh like the 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 figure C here. So uh the the one the one of the same video, like the they share uh similar motion but different appearance. They actually uh actually they have similar trajectory in this problem. And uh, but they are very they are of dif very different uh, appearance. So this uh produces gap. So what we need to do for the device process is uh we we actually uh to we we devise the Latin code to eliminate the appearance bias and uh, while returning their uh, relations in the uh, motion space. So here are some comparison with uh, existing baseline. And we can see that the uh, if we use a coupled tuning like here, actually it's kind of easy or prompt to overfitting. And uh, also, if we ablate the uh the de device loss, uh, it actually can cannot perform wear motion. And here are some uh human evaluation compared with the uh baseline methods, and uh, we can see from this figure that. Our model actually outperformed with outperformed uh, existing methods, and uh, here are more results of the uh, motion cust uh, customizations. Uh, for example, in this example, we can uh, we we have a reference video of a car turning. And uh, we can actually change it to a trunk or an elephant or et cetera. And uh, we also can create some uh, camera motion like the zoom in on uh, or the zoom out using the uh, motion director. And uh, we can also have uh, some advanced uh, cinematic shots like the orbit here and uh, also the, the pullback effect that, that is widely used in the movie creation. Yeah, so uh, we have been talked about a lot uh, in the uh, video diffusion, but Actually, the the one we I previous show, actually they are model on a two D uh space instead of uh using a three D space. So we know that uh uh in a three D space uh we have we may have more sampling views. So uh this is more there is more overlapping and interaction across different uh views so this might uh create better consistency so uh the question is that can we 
present represent this uh, video in a 3D space. So here we propose die video E that use a dynamic nerve to uh, represent a video and uh, do the video editing on this uh, 3D space. So here is the, the left one is original video and uh, we can uh, replace the person here, for example, to the hawk. And we can also change the background, the, the style of the background with the reference uh, images. And here's another example of changing a person to Luffy. So our motivation for this time is that, so the existing methods either rely on the uh, the correspondence guided frame-wise editing or the or they degrade the video editing to image editing by 2D video representations. So such method might encounter significant uh, difficulties in handling large scale motion and the view change, uh, especially for this kind of uh, human-centric videos. We have uh, humans for example, doing some uh, turning around, et cetera. So uh, this motivates us to introduce this dynamic nerve as a kind of uh, 3D representation for human-centric video editing. So I will briefly introduce the pipeline of a method. So we... Uh, actually, this uh, dynamic nerve is based on a previous work called horse nerve. So we have a background nerve and also a human nerve. We uh, process this uh, foreground and background independently. So for the background nerve, we uh, we we use the we first reconstruct the background scene. And uh, we then stylize this uh, reconstruction using the example uh, style images through the use of the uh, NNFM style laws. Actually, this laws calculates the uh, the render feature content and also the style uh, uh, feature content using a nearly neighbor laws. So. Uh, here's for background editing and uh, for the foreground uh, editing. So we, uh, we for the reference uh, post, we uh, use the reconstruction laws uh, with the reference images. And also we perform the uh, 3D 3D, uh, we have a 3D prior using the uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and uh, we also perform the SDS laws uh, on this uh, 3D representations. And uh, for other frame posts, we use the 2D SD, uh, SDS laws to, to render the appearance. So here we compare our uh, uh, Dye Video E with uh, other SOTA methods on uh, two data set. One is used for the host nerve paper, and also the other is the Newman data set. So our method uh, still outperforms uh, other competitive best science by a large margin. And here is... Uh, uh, quantitative comparison with other methods. So for this text to video zero and uh, re-render video, I actually uh, fail to uh, edit the person very well. And uh, also they face the problem of the, uh, the long-term temporal consistency, especially uh, when the video has 
uh, large view change or motion change. And uh, for this uh, texture live and uh, stable video and uh, codif, this kind of method, uh, they actually uh, fail to uh, form the correct uh, 2D address due to the uh, the length of the video. So uh, we found that uh, while doing the long-term videos, this kind of methods generally fails. And here are some ablations studied that we performed to evaluate the effect effectiveness of each design choice. And our method also allowed uh, this kind of uh, fr free view, uh, free point rendering at uh, any time step on the edit dynamic scene. Yeah, uh, I guess this is uh, all I want to cover today. And here are some useful links that to to these uh, four projects, and uh, you might find it useful in uh, your future research. And we also have this uh, awesome video diffusion. Uh, actually, it's a paper list. So we have an updated uh, paper list uh, that they keep updating. Uh, and uh, if you are more interested in the video diffusion part, you can refer to this uh, report for some useful uh, papers. And uh, we are also uh, have a tutorial that, uh, that is online uh, on YouTube. Uh, you, uh, you can refer to this uh, tutorial for more detailed uh, introductions of the uh, video diffusion model. And uh, we are going to organize a, a, a tutorial at uh, CVPR this year. Uh, so uh, also welcome uh, to join us at uh, this in-person meeting. And uh, finally, I would like to discuss a bit about uh, my thoughts on uh, this recent release uh, Sora model by the OpenAI team. Uh, yeah, I'm actually quite excited about this achievement by OpenAI. So it shows that the, uh, the scaling law also works in the transformer plus diffusion uh, architecture if you have uh, sufficient data and uh, compute resources. And uh, also I think uh, the data is uh, kind of a secret to this kind of uh, uh, amazing performance. Uh, I think they probably use some 3D videos from the game engine, like uh, what the Doomer says. And uh, also they, didn't mention the data part in their uh, technical report. So I think the data might be a key to achieve this uh, kind of amazing performance. And uh, despite this uh, Sora model is uh, quite amazing, I think uh, I think it, you can compare it all to the uh, moment of that uh, when the GPT-3 just released. And uh, I think I, now I, I can actually build, ha have the same feeling with uh, those NLP researchers when they uh, when they found the, the chart GPT or GPT-3. Uh, but it still has some uh, shortcomings and uh, as they have uh, presented in their technical report. So you cannot uh, fully understand the world, but uh, in terms of the uh, spatial temporal consistency, I think that uh, less of Sora model is 
uh, pretty amazing. But uh, to really work as a world simulator, I think we still have a very long way to go. And uh, I'm also expecting that an open source Sora will come in soon, uh, maybe in next few months, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I think uh, this is quite exciting and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, fantastic works on the uh, video diffusion model path. And yeah, that's all for today's talk and uh, thank you everyone for joining us.